Hello, everybody. This is your host, J.M. Talbo. You are listening to Truth Tellers Radio. This is episode 41, and we are going to take you on a wild ride through a B-movie today. Uh, the movie in question here is Shark Exorcist, and I've got a uh, co-host here with me who has watched the movie and uh, we are both going to review it. So she is, uh, her name is Anna, and she is a movie critic starting today, first day on the job. Anna, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. All right. So first of all, let's talk about the uh, plot to this movie. Uh, I'll lay it out, and you let me know if I'm right, if you uh, concur. Uh, essentially, there's a murderous nun who's satanic, and I don't think they tell you why that is, anything about her. And uh, she kills a girl, screams a prayer out on the side of a lake as she pushes the girl in the lake or the ocean, wherever it was, and uh, says that she wants a, <laughs> how did you put it, a gladiator or something? How did she put it? Um, it doesn't matter. She said, she said, hail Satan, I offer you the sacrifice. Right. Yeah, and she said, send me a, something, send me a gladiator or something, she, meaning like, you know, a, a demon from hell. And so what happens is uh, Satan does do that for her just by screaming in the sky and stabbing someone. So I guess that's all it takes. Uh, I'm sure it's not. So, you know, no, don't get any bright ideas out there if you want to be a <laughs> Satan. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so the shark gets possessed by the devil because of this uh, prayer incantation and murder she committed. And, um, yeah, the shark is CGI. Um, I, <laughs> when I watched it with Anna, I said, wow, the shark looks amazing. It looks real, doesn't it? And uh, she probably knew I was joking. But, yeah, uh, how do, is the, does the shark look pretty good? Or, you know, where's that? Is it mid-grade CGI? Or oh, it looks faker than fake. <laughs> It's got uh, glowing yellow eyes, which look even faker. And uh, during the whole movie, whenever anybody gets eaten by the shark, you see the CGI shark, and then you see the person maybe, you know, barely flopping around in the water. And uh, there's never, like, a real shark head they use to make it more real or a fin even. Like, there's nothing. You, these people do not look like they're being killed by a shark and dragged underwater. Um, what was it you noticed with the one girl where she got the shark bite? What happened? Oh, she get, became possessed. Oh, she can't. I know. But then there was some girl that was oh, stabbed. It was so fake. Like, and then she took the bandaid off, and on her, on her leg there was no scar, no nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the blood looked fake, I guess. I don't think it was a very good blood formula. It wasn't... Um, it wasn't uh, like Night of the Living Dead quality stuff, you know, it's kind of a weird color, um, I think. But that's a minor complaint. Uh, let's see. Um, so what do we have here? I got some notes here. Okay, so <laughs> the one girl becomes possessed, right, because she gets bit. But then there's another person that gets bit. And what happens to him? He was a priest. What happened? Oh, he he said that he would give his body for hers, and they, they it looked like they were kissing for 100 minutes, and he got the test. But when he gets bitten, it's like he's a vampire, not like a possessed demon. No, no, lady. that was the girl. That was the girl. Oh, okay. But but that's they both didn't act the same, though, right? Like, one is, like, right. acting like... Like this, like this is a vampire shark, I guess, that has bitten her. Like that was my comment while we were watching it. Um, and then they have a priest in the movie, and yeah, he gets he transfers the possession then, huh? And because uh, I will admit, I, I watched this while I was trying to uh, multitask, which is not something humans can actually do very well. Uh, the the priest dies then. How does he, he die? They didn't show him actually dying. They showed him get possessed, and that was it. And then he just walks off into the night. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, makes, that makes sense. All right. All right. Uh, the soundtrack. Mm. What do you think about the soundtrack? Awful. Awful. Like, uh, in what way? Oh, it was music that they wouldn't have to license. So they just picked, like, different stuff, and it was a lot of Casio keyboards. 
Yeah, well, I don't know if they even like, like got uh, royalty-free music. I think they just had an amateur on a Casio. And, uh, yeah. Um, so positive things about the film is it is uh, it is campy. It's it's not one of the ones where it's so bad you turn it off and you're like, I can't do this. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Right. So it it is worth a watch, I guess, uh, for, you know, for what it is. Um it does not show you any boobs. You would think it would have gratuitous uh, showing of boobs. Is, is that your experience with the horror genre there, uh, person who has boobs? Yeah. <laughs> would you ever show your boobs on a horror movie for a big check? No way. <laughs> a million dollars. Well, maybe for a million. All right, so that offer's out there, guys. She's got big tits, and she'll show them to you for a million bucks on a movie or, or otherwise. Hell, for a million, uh, she'll probably let you touch them. All right, but there are a lot of girls that are very cute in the now movie. Now, 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 uh, a lot of girls that are cute in the movie. They, you know, they show their butts for a really long time. At least one of them, a really long time on the beach in her bikini for no reason. Um, well, I, not no reason. I'm sure the, there was a reason. Uh, maybe ass, looking at ass. Just the director like looking at ass and figured the audience would too. Um, uh, right. Now, what else? I can't read my own writing. Oh, yeah. The worst part of the absurdity. Uh, you remember that, right? The craziest, stupidest part? What was that? Oh, I forgot one thing about the priest. Okay. When he got, when he got possessed, he had red glowing eyes. And they looked, like, awesome, right? Like. Oh, no. Hollywood. No? Shit. No. I had hope. Um, and the word I'll say to you to spark your memory is flying. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. Explain it to the people. Wait, what? Flying. I'm giving you a hint on the craziest part of the movie, flying. Oh. Mm -hmm. The shark. It flies at one point. It comes out of oh, nowhere. Yeah, you know it comes out the sky. <laughs> it comes out the sky, okay, and, uh, and how did it do that? And eats this person. I don't know, it just came out of nowhere. Just comes out the sky. Uh, there was no explanation, right, of how the shark could do this at all. Um, uh -uh. I guess you could just go like, like the people do with Star Wars and just go, I don't know, I don't know the force. So, uh, I don't know, the devil, like, <laughs> flying shark. Um, so, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, I didn't even say no, uh Sorry, there's going to be spoilers in the beginning here. I'll have to put that in the description. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Can you even spoil this movie for someone? <laughs> well, there's a special treat at the end after the credits. Yeah, uh, the credits of the movie? What's that? Well, it's like another scene. It's a bonus scene. Uh-huh. What happens? Well, it goes on for about 20 minutes, and this young girl... She's at a mall in an aquarium. Which, which, one, second, one second, which is very weird. Marvel movies have a thing after the movie's over, and it's like one second, you know? Yeah, well, this is I like 20 really minutes. Short. Yeah, 20 minutes is like, why did you stop the movie and roll credits? <laughs> it's really right. odd. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right, so anyway, what happens? Well, there's this girl, and she's at a mall, and she's like looking at all these stuffed sharks and everything else and they have an aquarium there and then at the end of after all that then she has this rubber shark and she was rubbing it on herself and kissing it she was kissing the aquarium then, too, right no she was yeah yeah <laughs> which reminds me there the nun also licks a bunch of blood off a murdered person she murders like for a long time just keeps licking the blood off and going mm, wow so good well, but then the zombie comes up out of the water <laughs> and gets her and drags her into the water. That makes sense. That makes total sense. Yeah. I haven't lost the plot at all. I got it. I got a good handle on what is going on with that. Yep. I'll uh, I'll refrain from explaining it, but uh, yeah, I got a good handle on it. So uh, anything else on this one, Anna? Nope. That's about it. All right. Well, that's Shark Exorcist. So, uh, you know, <laughs> if 
please, Jesus, make all the sharks immune from demon possession. Uh, fun doing this. Nice talking to you, Anna. I'm doing this with you. And hello, Great everybody to you out too, there. John Michael. Yeah, and hello to everybody out there on BitChute. Please financially support this channel if you can. Even a dollar would be very helpful. If you go to the bio, the description page of the channel, you will see all the activism and all the hard work I've done to try to make this world a better place for quite a long time now. I'm 42. So, but, um, yep, that's it. See you, guys. See you later, guys. Bye. Hi, everybody. This is J.M. Talbot, and you're listening to Truth Tellers Radio. This is being recorded as an addendum uh, to the interview. Well, I guess it's not an addendum if it's at the beginning, maybe. But anyway, um, after giving this movie um, known as Shark Exorcist a fairly bad review online, uh, I noticed uh, that I guess I'm in the minority. Like, uh, there's all these glowing reviews about the movie, and... um, I, I don't think there's any way that it was that it is as bad as I think, and these people are just trolling. And uh, the one person started a troll review, and then uh, that just snowballed. I think there's no chance at all that that happened. It just couldn't be. But I'm going to uh, read you a couple of these, and uh, then you can decide what you think after you uh, hear these and then hear what i got to say afterwards. So, Big Man Deadite says, this movie is a masterpiece of art, brought to light by an amazing producer. The actors, oh my god, they were as beautiful and amazing as a renaissance painting. The shark was truly terrifying, and I was on the edge of my seat the entire time, waiting and yearning for the next time I'd get to see it. The priest was perfect. I really felt like he was a man of God. He played his character perfectly. The side characters, Ollie's friends, were so amazing. The love they had for their friend was amazing, and really moved me to be a better friend. For example, how worried they got about her not acting like she did normally. Now, the main character, she really had me convinced she might actually be possessed by a shark. Finally, the movie was so ahead of its time, and that's probably the reason it's so underground and unknown, but I'm glad I got got the experience of watching and growing as a person. Truly a modern classic. Thank you for this beautiful film. Would watch again. And one more. And, you know, reviews like this have basically given this movie a four-star rating on Google. It's 3.7. All right, uh, 2001 Honda Civic. I guess this is a car that wrote this review. Uh, This is what he has to say. This is the best horror movie ever created, outdoing The Exorcist and Paranormal Activity. Five stars for me. The CGI of the shark was stellar and way before its time. This is a movie you do not want to miss. And warning, you might cry. That is how scary it is. I describe it as Exorcist, Paranormal Activity, and the greatest horror movie of all time, Nemo. I'll have to check that out. Uh, the acting is completely astounding with many moments where I was like, just wow. How could, I, how, how could I be this in real life? Uh, I think that's the title. That is, that is how good the acting is. It, it looks like real life, basically, is what he's saying. Uh, I, I believe it needs an Oscar. No, it needs an Oscar. Just wow, unbelievably good. No mistakes, no mess up. This movie is why you need to live, because you need to see it. Don't miss it. And it's free on Tubi. Go check it out. It's not cheesy whatsoever. My only complaint is that it's unbelievably religious. Go check it out, and don't go uh, to the lake. Uh, You could get bitten by a possessed shark. Now, when I reviewed The Flash... I talked about how great it is, and there's a, a lot of people that concur on that. A lot of, you know, mainstream sources, too, not just like your average guy in the street. There's, there's, there's articles out there about how it's the best thing that DC has brought forward, and uh, it made $55 million. Um, I heard the budget was like $200 million, um, or something like that. And I'm like, that seems fine. Like, you know, it's, it's going to be okay. But then... Um, You know, there's the streaming and all that, too. And, you know, in the end, I think they probably do make money on all these flops with the streaming and the merchandising and everything. Um, But what I think is happening, guys, I want to make this clear, is that good movies are now being shit on because of how shitty these companies have acted. Um, Still watch these movies. They're pretty good, Um, actually, in my opinion. uh, The Flash is great. 
you know, Gavin McGinnis says that, uh, you know, little boys, they want to fight evil and it's good guys versus bad guys and cops and robbers and all that. And that's true. And, and, uh, he, he further says that, you know, girls don't really have that drive. They want to dress up. They want to, uh, you know, uh, have tea and, you know, make things pretty and whatever. Um, again, there's always exceptions, but basically he said that this movie's for no one because, uh, you know, guys don't want to see girls kick ass, and girls don't want to kick ass. Well, there are exceptions, and me personally, uh, I like looking at ladies. Uh, I love the way they look, and I wish they did want to kick ass like these hero characters in this movie. So that's my, you know, take on that. Uh, I really, again, just think it's being shit on because of um, all the bullshit from Disney. Um, Disney minus com, by the way, as well as Truth Tellers Radio com and a ton of other ones. Um, so, and before I get to the uh, other clip we recorded here, I will say uh, one thing about this movie that's good is that it's not woke. Um, it's just a joke. And, uh, you know, a joke where a possessed shark can bite you and apparently turn you into either a zombie, uh, a... Um, a possessed person or a vampire. Zombie, possessed person, or a vampire. Okay. Yeah, sounds, makes sense. So anyway, let's get to the show. Oh, PS, PS, uh, hold on, this just in. Um, apparently, the people that, uh, you know, rate movies on IMDb, uh, they agree with me, weird, strangely. So, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know what to think now. Don't know if I'm stupid or smart again with the uh, with the uh, um, the, uh, the fucking Flash movie. You know, uh, I was right about how good it is, um, but you know, I, it was considered the biggest flop of all time, of all time. And yes, I do understand that uh, the the budget Disney, for instance, gets half the half their ticket sales, and then they they basically spend.